Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I was just having a nice beverage the other day when I remembered a memory from high school. It was a time when I was watching way too many 90s Knicks shows and I became so obsessed with them that I almost got kicked out of school because they affected my grades. But that's not to say I'm still not obsessed now. Karate Choppers is the episode where Spongebob and Sandy become so obsessed with karate to the point where it causes problems. Like SB129, this episode aired on December 31st, 1999 and is the last episode of the show to premiere in the 90s as well as the second millennium before we move on to the third millennium with the 2000s onwards. I was only born in 1997 and I still miss the 90s. This was also the first episode to truly focus on karate and everybody's favorite side of Sandy Cheeks, her karate side. Obviously we've known she likes karate's and is good at karate ever since she was introduced in episode 3 of Tea at the Tree Dome, but this is the first episode that focuses solely on her karate skills. While I personally do like Sandy's scientist side, I would never deny that her karate side is even better. I have a soft spot for this episode. Throughout my high school years, there were periods of times where I would just watch a random episode over and over again because there were just so many awesome moments that I just couldn't help but watch it a lot. This episode wasn't the first episode, but it is one of the episodes that I watched a lot while I went through this phase. Now with that out of the way, let's watch this episode and see how good the first karate themed episode of the series is. So the episode starts up and Spongebob is walking cautiously backwards to his house. When he goes inside, he hears a noise and steps on ducks while he tries to sneak up on Sandy. He didn't find her and sat down to watch a live action fish show. Sandy appeared out of nowhere and they engaged in karate combat. Spongebob rolled Sandy up into a squirrel knot and threw her like a bowling ball. Wow, Spongebob's karate has quite improved since the last time we saw him do it. Sandy says she'll get him back tomorrow. Later that night, Sandy was reading a book and Spongebob called to Karate Chopper through the phone, but she gets him back. The next day at the Bargain Mart, Spongebob ran into Sandy and he attacked her by sending her flying into a stack of tin cans. Later on, Spongebob was walking and found a pile of cans thinking that was a bad Sandy disguise. Sandy appeared and said that this squirrel mask was. You know, I'm not sure which disguise is worse. The pile of cans sticks out like a sore thumb, but that face mask is hilariously ugly whether she wears it over her helmet or just her face. Sandy grabs Spongebob's tongue and tried to put volcano sauce on it, and a live action face commands that that drop of hot sauce to be extremely hot. What makes one particular drop of hot sauce hotter than another drop of that exact same hot sauce? Spongebob admitted surrender to distract Sandy, and it turns out his tongue was just a novelty toy. He used it to try to take Sandy down, but Sandy ended up winning anyway. The next day, the Krusty Krab was very busy, but Spongebob was too distracted by thinking about Sandy sneaking up on him to focus on work. Wow, he loves the Krusty Krab a lot, but he's still thinking of Sandy and not Krabby Patties. Huh. Spongebob imagined Fred as Sandy and attacked him thinking he was Sandy trying to sneak up on him. Mr. Krabs asks Spongebob what he did and wonders if he's on some kind of new allergy medication and Spongebob says he's just doing karate. Spongebob may not be on any kind of new allergy medication, but I am. Mr. Krabs tells Spongebob to get back to work. Later on, Squidward tells Spongebob to mop the bathrooms. When Spongebob goes to do so, he hears a sneeze and tries to sneak up on whoever he hurt. He ends up attacking Mr. Krabs thinking he was Sandy. You know, I just realized. Does the Krusty Krab only have a men's room, or is that a restroom for both men and women? Mr. Krabs threatens to fire Spongebob if he continues doing karate. This made Spongebob sad and when he tries to tell Sandy, she kept attacking him and refused to listen or believe him. When Mr. Krabs catches wind of this, he says, Spongebob, you're fired! Oh wow, that ain't good. I would kill to see that line become an actual episode. Oh right. Spongebob starts crying hysterically and Sandy tells Mr. Krabs that it was her fault since she wouldn't listen and she convinces him to give him another chance. Mr. Krabs agrees to do so as long as Spongebob stops doing karate. Sandy realized he was being serious and they try to find something else to do instead of karate. Spongebob suggests trying to squeeze things or act like plants. Spongebob and Sandy decide to go to the park and have a picnic and they try to stop thinking about karate and notice a man fishing. A fish from Bikini Bottom was shown fishing with a fishing pole. Is that guy a cannibal? 
SpongeBob and Sandy start making sandwiches, and they start slicing the barnacle loaf with karate chops. They soon start to go crazy and slice everything else, including the buns, tomatoes, cheese, and lettuce, and end up making sandwiches in the process. As SpongeBob starts to eat a sandwich, they start playing karate again. Later on, Mr. Krabs notices everything that happened to the park and saw SpongeBob and Sandy. SpongeBob tries to hide his actions, but he admitted that he couldn't help himself and says Mr. Krabs will just have to fire him. See, there he is. He told Mr. Krabs he'd just have to fire him since he's been playing karate with Sandy too much. But Mr. Krabs had a different idea, having SpongeBob and Sandy make Krabby Patties by doing karate. SpongeBob and Sandy were happy doing this. Mr. Krabs loves the extra money. Squidward says he hated all of them, and the episode ends. So that was Karate Choppers, and I love that episode. It's still just as hilarious after all these years. There are so many funny scenes here. I love the part at the beginning when SpongeBob was stepping on the duck toys while trying to sneak up on Sandy. The moment where SpongeBob tried to karate chop Sandy over the phone, and when she hangs up the phone, was another awesome part. I also really like the part with the hot sauce drop's live action face. Fun fact, that hot sauce drop is played by Tom Kenny. He had red makeup all over his face and it was shot in the restroom at Nickelodeon. I will say, the first time I watched this episode as a kid, I was a little startled when I saw it. But obviously that's the point, it comes out of nowhere and that's what's supposed to make it funny. The photosynthesis line is always funny, and I remember in class one time, when the teacher asked about photosynthesis for the first time, I couldn't resist doing that line. Even some of my old classmates brought up that specific scene to the teacher. On the other hand, there is something I wondered about. After Mr. Krabs told Spongebob to stop doing karate, why did Spongebob leave the Krusty Krab? Of course, it's possible Mr. Krabs sent him home early after the actions in the bathroom, or maybe Spongebob actually had to leave because his shift was over. Aside from that, I can't think of anything else to question about the episode. I also love the part where Sandy karate chops Spongebob out of nowhere and she said, "Yer mince me, and they started going crazy. My friend and I also loved when Mr. Krabs went, Bathroom! when Spongebob says, Do you think Mr. Krabs ever does karate? This next part isn't a complaint, this is just a little side point. The live action fish talked about going into the seafood aisle and saying, Who eats this stuff? I must confess, I am guilty of doing that myself. It was another scene I liked and I didn't eat a lot of seafood as a kid other than fish sticks, so I felt inappropriate to do that same thing. Anybody else out there do that too? No? Just me? Alright. I also find it interesting how Spongebob actually beats Sandy in a karate match in this episode since he's normally nowhere near as good as Sandy when it comes to karate. But that's hardly a complaint. The fact he's so good here really helps emphasize the comedy here, in my opinion, since a lot of the best scenes in this episode revolve around karate. Speaking of which, since this was the first episode focused entirely on karate, it was a great way to introduce it. This episode is so fast paced with all the gags in the comedy, which is enough to keep somebody engaged. The different types of ways Spongebob and Sandy beat each other up were just hilarious. Other scenes like Spongebob calling Squidward titles like Boss and Poobah and Squidward screaming at this point is also great, as well as Spongebob and Mr. Krabs calling the Krabby Patties on Squidward's head a hairpiece. Even though I love all the episodes of the series, looking at this critically, I would call this one of my favorite episodes from season 1, especially considering what I talked about earlier. I loved watching it as a child, and I never grew out of it. It still makes me laugh to this day as an adult as much as it did as a kid and a teenager. No matter how much I may say the same things about this stuff, that's just how I feel man. I just love this show. It's a great watch and always worth checking out every now and then. Oh yeah, Spongebob's karate term is also an amazing part. Karate Choppers is an amazing episode and still holds up to this day. From the physical humor to Spongebob coining the term karate, this episode is a gem that, in my opinion, will never get old no matter what age a Spongebob fan is when watching it. And after being reminded of my obsession with 90s Nickelodeon, I'll never get over how much better the 90s were compared to the 2020s. Not just with TV, but with... EVERYTHING! Except video games.